Chapter 3 is on the molecules of cells. Now again, the course doesn't stress chemistry, but you have to at least know a little bit of it to understand some aspects of biology. Now, besides water, most of the rest of the body is made of organic material, that is carbon-based. So an organic compound is a compound made of mostly carbon, and it's got other things attached to it. Now in section one, it talks about the specialness of carbon. Carbon can form four covalent bonds, so if you have a bunch of carbons, you could put them together in a huge variety of ways, hence complexity of molecules. Now here I've just drawn two simple hydrocarbons, methane and ethane. They're both gases, they don't mix well with water, they're just made of carbon and hydrogen. But the molecules of our body have to be more complex than that. So section two describes portions of molecules called functional groups. It is beyond the scope of this course to make you memorize functional groups. Just understand that they affect the properties of these molecules and they can make them dissolve in water and behave in various ways. Now, cutting to the chase, biological molecules, four categories in the body. Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. All four categories can exist as small molecules such as monomers or put together into big molecules such as polymers. Now here we go over the four types. Carbohydrates include the sugars and the starches. They're mainly for an energy source, but not always. Now in section four, it discusses monosaccharides. Monosaccharides are simple sugars. Examples include glucose, fructose, and galactose. Okay? Disaccharides are sugars made of two monosaccharides. Examples of Disaccharides include sucrose, which is table sugar, lactose, which is found in milk, and maltose, which is found in grains. Now polysaccharides, section 7, are huge molecules made of lots of monosaccharides. Starch is how plants store energy. It's an energy storage polysaccharide. Glycogen is how we store carbohydrates in the liver and in muscle tissue. And cellulose, which is not for energy, is the makeup of plant cell walls and other fibrous parts. And cellulose is mostly undigestible. It's for plant structure, not for energy. So that's an overview of carbohydrates. The rest of this is in your notes. Now the next category are the lipids. The lipids are a very diverse group of mostly hydrophobic, meaning not dissolving well in water, molecules. Now most lipids are fats and oils. Fats and oils are triglycerides. Look at the pictures in your book on this section. It shows you a drawing of what a triglyceride is. It's made of a glycerol and three fatty acids. Now the structure of the fatty acids has to do with the type of fat it is. You've heard of saturated fats, monounsaturated fats, omega-3 fats, all these different types of fats. They all differ in the structure of the fatty acids. They are triglycerides. Now saturated, of course, means that the hydrogens on the carbon chain are maxed out. That is, the carbon chains of the fatty acids are holding as many hydrogens as they can. Now, if they're missing some, then they are unsaturated. Okay? Now, we'll talk more about the diet and various types of things in, in later in the, in the course. Phospholipids, oh, by the way, triglycerides are for energy, okay? uh, just like carbs can be. One gram of sugar or starch gives you four kilocalories. One gram of fat gives you nine kilocalories, more than twice as much. Phospholipids, however, aren't for energy. They're for cell membrane structure. Cell membranes are made of a double layer of phospholipids. So, again, look at the drawing there. With the phospholipid molecule, half the molecule is hydrophilic, meaning it can mix with water. The other half is hydrophobic, meaning that it can't. So what is it going to do when you put it in the water? They're going to form a membrane naturally. Now, steroids, also in sections 9 and 10, steroids aren't made of fatty acids. They're made of fused carbon rings. Steroids are also known as sterols, and examples of steroids include cholesterol, vitamin D, anabolic steroids, sex hormones, hormones that are secreted by the uh, adrenal cortex, um, such as cortisol, things like that. So anyway, those are just some examples of lipids and their various purposes. Proteins, very important in the body. Okay? Proteins are made of amino acids. Examples of proteins include hemoglobin, hair, antibodies, collagen. I've listed some examples in the notes. Be sure to look over it. Now, they start off with amino acids. They are the monomers of proteins. There are 20 kinds of amino acids. 
but there is a near limitless variety of pro possible proteins that can exist. By the way, your proteins are based on the amino acid structure, which is dictated by your genetic code. Now, in sections 12 and 13, it talks about tr protein structure or shape and its function. You start off with your primary structure. This is uh, in section 13. The primary structure of a protein is the amino acid chain, which ones you have and in what order. But it's not going to stay a chain. See, you have hydrogen bonds interacting between parts of the chain, which will call it to, cause it to, to, to coil or to twist. And that's called the secondary structure. But you can also wad it up further by other interactions between amino acids into a three-dimensional tertiary structure. Now, when you have these tertiary structures attached to each other, that's called the quaternary structure. Hemoglobin, for example, which is in blood, is made of four tertiary structures. And it has a specific function. It binds oxygen, carries it in the blood. Anything that interferes with a protein's shape will interfere with its function. Uh, high heat can denature or disrupt function of proteins. Okay, that's why fevers can be dangerous if they get excessive. The next category are the nucleic acids. Nucleic acids include DNA and RNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, and RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. DNA and RNA are easier to spell. Now, they are made of monomers called nucleotides. Now, there's more to say about this, but if you look at uh, sections 15 and, and on both pages, it shows you the, the nucleotides go by several letters, A, T, C, and G. Now, if you look at the double helix structure of DNA, it's made of two nucleotide strands wrapped around each other like a twisted ladder. And you'll notice that with this DNA double helix, the A always corresponds to a T and the C always corresponds to a G. This is very important on the genetic level, but we'll get to that at another time. And this is a brief review of chapter 3.